but also comprise helps is for customers who are completely born in the cloud, right? And you know, a lot of organizations either have embraced cloud a few years back or they have been generating a lot of data in the cloud itself, right? These are going in Azure blobs, they're going in AWS buckets and GCP storage, uh, right? And they have been generating this data a lot. And what they have been doing is there hasn't been any great rules or, or, or way to achieve that, right? C customers create multiple accounts, thousands of buckets, and you suddenly see this bucket sprawl and you know, confusion in your, in your storage account. So the same concept applies really for the data that's born in the cloud and sitting in these object stores where Comprise can not just manage what we saw before was all your NAS unstructured data, but think about all your S3 or blobs unstructured data as well. The same concept applies there as well. You need a, you need a way to understand it. You need a way to un understand where the data is, what kind of data, how much, what am I paying for it? What can I do to make it go to the cheaper storage class? Which one should go there, right? So you really need that view uh, of, of, of the data. And again, agnostic to where it's being stored, right? No silos, right? being able to have it scalable, right? So all those things really apply. So this section will talk about more objects. How can I migrate objects? How can I do multi-cloud data management where I can migrate data from, from objects from one cloud to another cloud for replication use case, for migration use case? How I can do the management of my objects once they're in the cloud to really get me the cost benefits in a very unique way uh, based upon the access time and stuff uh, that Comprise can help you with that as well. So a few things again, very cloud agnostic, analytics based, uh, really you know, building that virtual metadata lake for even objects in the cloud as well. So I'll go ahead and, you know, Mike, you wanna talk about the architecture for, uh, for this as well? Yep, certainly, thank you, Mohit. So um, the, the architecture, the cloud architecture for cloud services is the, the, very similar to what we have for the on-prem. It, it, is, it is a comprise service running in, in the cloud. It starts with the director that the administrator connects to. And in this case, we have a, a customer who's got two clouds. And so they, they want a unified multi-cloud, uh, multi-vendor view managed from that single director console. But the director, because we're talking with cloud services, we're gonna get a lot of help from other services that will run with, in the comprised cloud. Uh, operation services, orchestration, a service controller. And if you look at this, the operation services <clears throat> are the ones that um, just talk directly to uh, the accounts and the buckets and the containers that the uh, administrator sets us up with. And once we get set up with the buckets, we can fill that metadata lake with the operations. And as you see here, it's entirely a comprised hosted service that's managing uh, your, your cloud storage in, in, in your, across your various vendors, that single pane of glass. Um, but in the event that we do need to do more, that we, we need to talk file system protocols, we have the ability to spin up observer services. We call observer services, they sit there in the, in the premises, in the tenant of the customer and can work there. And in fact, those are what do this, the migration that, that Mohit is about to show you. Great, thanks, Mike. So let's go ahead and jump in the cloud um, data management. So again, the, the same thing, we are looking at comprise director, right? Which is showing in this case, a uh, customer has, uh, you know, working with multiple clouds, right? We have you know, data in Amazon S3, Microsoft Azure, using Wasabi cloud storage. They have also some on-prem object storage as well. Um, but again, right, so very, very uh, uh, dynamic uh, data stores that they have, multiple vendors. Uh, and again, very easy to add, just go ahead and add an object store. We can discover buckets in your AWS accounts, discover all the accounts, uh, you know, as well, uh, for both from Amazon and Azure perspective. Once you have done that, it's kind of very simple, same concept, similar view, right? Nothing different than what we have you know, shown before. Very easy to do the migration of your data across clouds, right? Where you can go ahead and uh, create a replication job between your, your, you know, that's one of the customers, uh, you know, doing, right? Where they have uh, data in one of the clouds, they want to protect that data, they want to have a copy of their data in another cloud. 
you can really set up that, uh, that replication using our elastic data migration. Again, right, we are able to uh, manage that jobs, multiple jobs, very easy to, to kind of have them running and, and, and watch the progress for. And you can, you know, if you want to cut over, you can move the data completely, or you want to have a constantly running for a replication use case, uh, you can absolutely do that as well. Same thing in the, you know, in the deep analytics, right? You're not just really, uh, you know, slice and dice your objects. You can custom tag your data, right? Again, tagging that works across the clouds, not specific to a cloud provider, right? So there's no silos. You can find the objects, you know, based upon the prefix, the type, the extension, whatever you want to do. It's kind of build that the data lake that you have to really able to find anything that you're looking for right within the deep analytics console. And this is all about your, your all, in this case, the customer has all objects kind of born in the cloud, managing you know, data in the cloud. And all this is being done as a service. And as Mike mentioned, nothing they need to set up till now. We can all run. It's very simple to set up. Uh, you, know, you, you just you know, go ahead and configure your comprise account and that's it, right? Nothing needs to be done uh, from their perspective at all. And, and one thing to mention here, Mohit, it, while you were on that data analytics, uh, um, the deep analytics tab, we actually look at your objects in the cloud by last access, which is something that's unique. Um, yeah. other, other tools will look at the create time of the objects. We look at the access time of the objects so that you really get a picture of what it is that you want to do with, with your data and, and, and how you want to manage it. Great point, Mike. Thank you. And that gets to us to the plan page, right? Where again, I think as I think uh, same thing applies for uh, let's let's say you want to put a strategy in place where you want to move the data to the glacier. Com the 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 ILM policies in AWS are, are working towards when the data was created on the on AWS, right? So you can say, okay, after ninety days of the data being created, you can put it at the glacier, but you don't know whether it's getting accessed or not in the last ninety days. Right? There is no view, there is no insights about it. It's very hard to get that information if you use multiple services from AWS, and even then you don't get a consolidated view. Here you can get a very easy view, how much data have not been accessed for the last one year, it's sitting in there. Um, how much data hasn't been accessed kind of for more than that, or, or, or what is the hot data that I've been accessing in the last three months? I don't wanna to touch that, but I can anything else I can transition to IA, I can transition to Glacier. I can have a consistent policy for Azure right away as well that I can move to the Azure, you know, from hot to cool to archive storage, right from the same console. So I have a consistent policy that I can build and I can get my cost savings just like I saw when I went from my, my on-premises NAS storage to the cloud, I can have the exact same view of my cost savings if the data gets tiered within uh, within the cloud provider as well to the cheaper storage classes. And Comprise kind of do or manage all of that automatically for the rest of the life cycle of the data as a new data gets generated in the buckets, a new data gets added. It all is applicable to that. If the plan is active, we'll continue to manage the data and, 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 and keep it in the right storage class based upon the access of the data, not when the data was created. And you get the same insights in here as well on the usage with how much data and which storage class, you know, what, I, what am I paying for that, right? The, the view that really even within the console of AWS, you don't get it, but forget about that. In a single cloud provider, you want a view of across your clouds that it's impossible to get, right? And the comprise kind of gives you that central view of all your, your unstructured data from the, from the usage perspective, from the cost perspective as well. Great. So, so really, I think, uh, you know, we, we talked about all the three use cases here, right? But how you can migrate data from on-premises to cloud, right? Two different strategies. You want to move an entire thing. You want to move your cold data while maintaining your native access. Or how do you manage that data that's in the cloud effectively as well, right? And Or even migrate the data between cloud efficiently using access time, and again, no silos between your public clouds. One single pane of class to manage your data on-prem or cloud or any cloud, basically. 